In this video, we'll consider one fascinating matrix product with massive applications. So consider this matrix, call it R of alpha because it really does depend on one parameter. And inside that matrix, a few trig functions. The first column is cosine alpha sine alpha, and the second column is minus sine alpha cosine alpha. And the product that we'll consider will be R of alpha times the same matrix with beta plug in, plugged in instead of alpha. And in the course of evaluating this product, we'll need these trigonometric identities, which I hope you remember. If you don't remember, here they are. But of course, this is the sort of thing that you should remember. Trigonometry is very important and it'll play an important role in the remainder of the course. Now, before we consider this product, let me ask you a few questions about R of alpha because it has a few interesting things that can be observed. First of all, what happens when we plug in alpha equals zero? R of zero is the identity matrix. Well, because cosine alpha is one and sine of alpha is zero, so we're left with the identity matrix. That's very interesting. What happens when you plug in minus alpha instead of alpha? When you plug in minus alpha instead of alpha, cosine keeps its sign because cosine is an even function. Cosine of minus alpha equals cosine of alpha. What happens to the sine? Sine changes its sign. And this two numbers will pick up the minus sign. In other words, they'll trade places compared to the opposite value of alpha. So uh, let's say sine of alpha was a positive number. When you plug in minus alpha, the negative number moves here and the positive number moves here. So what used to be rows of the matrix will now become columns of the matrix. So in the language of matrix algebra, it'll be the transpose of itself. So plugging in at zero gives you identity. Plugging in in minus alpha instead of alpha gives you the transpose of what you had with alpha. Already pretty interesting. But nothing compared to what will happen when we multiply these two matrices together. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll do it on my own. You do it on your own. And remember to use these identities. Here we go. All right, let me carry out the calculation or at least talk through it. We're going to go, we're going to take the dot product perspective on this uh, matrix product and, and evaluate it one entry at a time, starting with this entry. So this, this entry will come from multiplication from the dot product of this column and this row. So we'll have cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. Hey, wait a minute. That's this formula. That's cosine of alpha plus beta. So that's what we have in the first cell. Let's see what we'll have in this cell. In this cell, we'll have sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. And wait a minute, that's the first formula. So in this cell, we have sine of alpha plus beta. So it's almost like matrix multiplication in this form combined with these matrices was invented to do trig or to at least work very well with trig. And work well with trig it does. What we're going to have here, of course, is negative sine of alpha plus beta. And what we're going to have in the last entry will be cosine of alpha plus beta. Isn't that fascinating? We basically use these formulas twice each. And here's what we discovered, that we get the trig functions of the sum, which, of course, can be written as R of alpha plus beta. So number one, we can say that there is a little bit of exponential behavior happening. What other function do you know where the product of two arguments, the product of the functions of two arguments equals the function of the sum? Right? Only exponential functions work the, that way. So there's something exponential going on here, which is really fascinating because all we really did was multiplication and addition, but the result is a little bit of exponential behavior with trig. So all of this 
comes together in a marvelous way in linear algebra. All right, so that's one observation. Uh, and that's pretty good. We could have ended right here. But we can get so much out of this formula. For example, we can determine the inverse of R of alpha. So what matrix would you need to multiply it by to get the identity matrix? And remember, we discovered that the identity matrix results when R is applied to zero. So beta needs to be chosen to be minus alpha. So R of minus alpha is the inverse of R of alpha, which is also its transpose. Now you have space to write it here. The inverse of R of alpha is R of negative alpha. And this gets boxed for its fantastic elegance and lots of other things 